The delta delta is used when you have a patient with a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, and you want to assess whether or not they have an additional non-anion gap metabolic acidosis or an additional metabolic alkalosis. And the reason it's called the delta delta is because it's simply the equation of the change in your anion gap versus the change in your bicarb. So what does a change in the anion gap actually mean? So that's gonna be the patient's calculated anion gap minus what a typical anion gap would be, which would be 12. And then for the change in the bicarb, you're going to take a standard bicarb of 24 and subtract from it the patient's bicarb. Any ratio less than 0.8 is going to tell you that the patient has both a high anion gap metabolic acidosis as well as a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. From 0.8 to 2 is going to be telling you that the patient has a pure high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And finally, any value greater than 2 is going to tell you that there is both a high anion gap metabolic acidosis as well as a metabolic alkalosis as well. So let's do some examples really quick. So here are three separate BMPs here, and we can calculate the anion gap uh, for all of these, and then we're going to calculate the delta delta, which is the again the change in the anion gap over the change in the bicarb. So for this first example, the anion gap is 135 minus 115, and so the anion gap is going to be 20. So in this case, we're going to do the change in the anion gap, which is 20 minus 12, over the change in the bicarb. So a normal bicarb is 24, and we're going to subtract 15. And so we are going to get 8 over 9. And so this is going to tell us that you have basically a pure high anion gap metabolic acidosis. In this case, we have uh, an anion gap, again, of 135 minus 115. So we have an anion gap of 20. And then we do 20 minus a normal anion gap of 12. And then 24 minus the patient's bicarb. And this is going to get us a value of 8 over 14. This one, in this case, is telling us that there is both a high anion gap metabolic acidosis as well as an additional non-anion gap metabolic acidosis as the patient's bicarb is lower than expected based on how much their uh, anion gap has changed. And then finally, for this final example, if you calculate the anion gap, again, it is 20. So we do 20 minus 12. But in this case, the patient has a bicarb of 20. So we do 24 minus 20, and we get 8 over 4, which equals 2. And so this is telling us that there is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis as well as a metabolic alkalosis. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to learn more about acid-base disorders, I have another video where I go more into detail about everything you should know about acid-base disorders. You can click here for that. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video and peace.